Welcome to the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage, where rude mechanicals do magic. Hello, I'm Bronze Age, Director of the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage. And today we're at the BF Bench with the door from a china hutch, which has come off its hinges. Now this is quite a nice door. The wood is mahogany. We've got this tracery on the front, which kind of imitates uh, stained glass, but this is one single pane of glass on the other side. The corners are mitered, and much more than that I can't tell you because nothing's broken. There may be a bridle joint or something else inside here, but there's no way to tell, and there's no evidence on the outside. Our problem is the hinges. The rail has split at the uh, screws for the hinges, this one is actually open and separated. The one at the top is cracked, but not quite this bad. So the first order of business is going to be to try and glue this crack up and let it sit overnight so we can continue with our repairs. We're using Type Bond 3 for this because that's what I've got on the shelf right now. And uh, it's probably as good a PVA glue as you're going to get. And this will sit until the morning, and we will continue. This came out nice. Now we have to turn our attention to these stripped out screw holes. Now the reason this board split like it did is fairly plain to see. The lines of the grain are perfectly straight up and down so that the screws went in between the grain and just simply split it apart. Now the obvious solution in these cases is you just stick something in the hole, cut it off flat, and put the screw back in, which will create the exact same situation that we had before. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove a good bit more wood in the screw hole and put in another piece with the grain running in the other direction. We're at the Packer 12 speed precision drill press where I put this rubber padding over the table to protect the finish because when you're in the business of repairing furniture, you don't want to create work that you're not going to get paid to fix. This is mahogany, which is a fairly hard wood. I've got a half inch Forstner bit and I'm running at 730 RPM with the depth stop set. This is a plug cutting bit, which is basically a, a hole saw, but the precision dimension is on the inside instead of the outside. I'm going to cut the plugs from this scrap of walnut. The grain is flat to the face on this piece, so I'm not going to have a problem with it splitting when the screw goes in it. This particular style of uh, plug cutter makes a lot of smoke because there's so much friction on this outside surface. And that's why I've got the vacuum hooked up to try and draw as much of that away because it filled the shop up with smoke pretty quickly. Now, in addition to being a stronger anchor for the hinge screws, this also greatly increases the glue area for repairing that split. Now, we 
let this dry for a little bit, shave these off flat, and this job is really actually done. Now cutting these plugs with the grain flat should make them quite easy to trim down. Which uh, they are. Now to help install the hinges, I have a special tool. This is a Stanley 1109 and it is supposed to be a nail set for particularly small nails or brads. Now why anybody would need a spring-loaded nail set which takes the place of this, I really can't say. But what I find it useful for is I can put it right here on the hinge and I can get the screw hole perfectly centered and it makes it much easier to install the hinges because if you get the screw off just a little bit it'll pull the hinge one way or the other. The next a gimlet to drill the hole. I'm going to be using brass screws to hold the hinges down. But brass screws are a little delicate. It's actually quite easy to strip out the head or even break them off if you get them too tight. So I always chase the threads with a steel screw first. And then we got to know that the hole is deep enough and uh, wide enough that the brass screw is not going to get damaged. Now the only thing left to do is to make an appointment so I can take this door back to its home and put it back on the cabinet it came off of. I generally don't really like to do house calls because no matter how many tools and materials you carry with you, you've always taken everything you need but one. I don't think I've ever had a house call where somehow I didn't end up having to go back to get something. but. Since the only tool needed for this installation is the Phillips screwdriver, well, I think I can handle that. So this is Bronze Age for the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage, and I thank you for watching this video. Really would appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe. Please comment, ask questions. I read them all, I answer them all, but frankly, don't get that many, so it's a pretty easy thing to do. Again, thank you.